Today we are building the new motor for the giveaway Evo 10. Now unfortunately I'm a little bit short on time so I don't have time to do the ASMR style video like I've done in the past or a full-on guide tutorial like I've done in the past. So this is just going to be me chilling building the motor tonight. I have everything here. There's one important thing I did forget to order and that will be here tomorrow as I overnighted it and that is a set of head studs. We are going with a set of manly rods, Wisco pistons, ACL race bearings, a slew of OEM new goodies, rear main, front seal, new timing chain, of course head gasket, I don't know why I have these sitting here, a spare set of stem seals, bunch of other random stuff, new pump, reusing pan, timing cover, valve cover, head we just got back from the machine shop, I dropped this off a few days ago, they went through it quickly, thankfully this thing's ready to go, brand new, crankshaft, same concept, Dropped this off at another machine shop. They went through and hot tanked it, polished it, made sure it's perfect, ready to run. These pistons are bored to this block. But as always, we're gonna check the clearances and make sure everything is good to go. I want this thing to be a nice spicy motor for you guys, nice and reliable. And uh, I guess it's not fully, fully built. We are staying stock head for my power goals and uh, for your guys' power goals which is 700 wheel horsepower on ethanol. The stock cams definitely put in work. If I was going for like 800, 900, of course I'd want to do cams. So yeah, that is the breakdown of what we're doing today, man. New motor time for the Evo 10. I'm going forward and shooting for the quickest turnaround time ever. Yesterday, this car, yesterday morning, this car was running and I want it running again with the new built motor by tomorrow night. As always, the first thing we need to do is check all the clearances. Main, rod, piston wall, set ring end gap. Could you skip checking clearances? I mean, if you really want to, technically you could, and it might be fine. Who knows? That's the thing. You don't know unless you check. Uh, ring end gap is very, very necessary because usually they come out of the box way too tight, so you need to open them up. If they're way too tight, when steel or anything expand, when anything gets warm and expands, and say goodbye to your ring lands, because they'll crack. Let's start off with, as always, the main line. Main line meaning, bam, main, 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 main. That would be rod. On the main line, I want it around 20 thou. The rod a little bit looser, around 23, 24 thou. Here is a set of standard size main shells. The one with no groove and no holes goes in the cap or the girdle. The one with the groove in the holes goes in the block. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was working on a K-Series for a second. 4B11 indeed does have caps. A K-Series, the caps are part of the girdle. That's why I said that earlier. Toss it on the main caps right now. They are numbered one through five. And if you're looking at it, if the motor's upside down, like it is now, exhaust over here, the numbers are all facing this way, like that. Or an easier way to tell, cap number one, that bolt hole has to be facing the timing side, as that is for one of the oil pump chain guides. Right now I'm going through and measuring out the main line. The mains are done, ready to go. Everything measured out beautifully. Let's pop open our new manly connecting rods. We got the bearings, standard size bearings into the rods. Rod torque on these is 60 foot pounds. Don't mind piston in the background snoring. Once again, we're going for about a 23 thou. And this rod here, which will be rod number three, coming in at 22 thou. Beautiful. Up next is the piston set. There's a lot of good piston manufacturers, but I really like the Weisskos. Look at how beautiful these things are. Factory compression ratio, solid piston. All right, let's measure out the piston to wall clearance. Okay, here is my bore gauge. It is set to the OD, the outside diameter of the piston. And now we're gonna check the piston to wall clearance. However far past zero it goes, starting now is our piston to wall clearance. So that's 48 right there. Now you want to rotate it around, spin it around in the cylinder to make sure 
it didn't get bored egg shaped. Check the top, check the bottom, check the whole thing. Now, one last thing to do before assembly is the ring end gap. Let's check the top ring on cylinder number one. Pop her down into the cylinder. Take your piston, flip it over. So the ring goes down nice and square. Oof, that's real tight. That's like maybe a 009, 008. Yeah, let's loosen that up substantially. The top ring will go 018. In the second ring, I'll go 021 on the setup. Alrighty, 018, done. The fun part, all of the ring end gaps are set. Now it is onto assembly, which is, in my opinion, relaxing, enjoyable, fun, stress free. We can either put the pistons, sorry, 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 backtrack. We can either put the rings on the pistons now or we can hang the pistons on the rods and then rings on pistons. I prefer that method. So we're gonna put the hole one piston on hole one rod and then put the rings on the piston. That makes sense. There is a lot of good assembly lubes out there, but the Permatex Ultra Slick is quite nice. I like it. All right, we're ready for the rings and gap placement. This is what I always go off of. All of the rings are installed. Let's assemble. Crankshaft goes in first. Here is our bearings with the assembly lube. Of course, got our thrust washers on there. Grooves facing out toward the crankshaft. Keep in mind, there are no oil squirters installed yet. I will put those in later after the pistons are in just to make sure they do not interfere with the pistons. Now we drop the piston and rod assembly down into the cylinder wall. Make sure you lube up the rod side bearing before it goes in, otherwise it's kind of a pain. And then as far as cylinder wall lube, I prefer ATF. There's a million few different things you can use. I like ATF. Hole number one is done. Crank and rods are torqued down. Now we're doing the oil squirters and this is why you need to check. Watch this. Not bolted down yet. Rotate it over. Yep. That hits, so we need to bend them or delete them. I'm gonna bend them a little bit that way, a little bit that way. That should work. This thing is complete and now it's ready for the girdle, which is this. We're gonna clean both gasket surfaces very, very thoroughly and then apply our sealant. The goal was, of course, to get this thing 100% complete today. Like I said earlier, I did forget to order the ARP head studs, so I overnighted those. They'll be here tomorrow, paid extra for Saturday delivery. There was one local guy who thought he had some, but they were for eight or nine. So we cannot move on until my head studs come. Now, have I debated putting the stock head bolts back in? Certainly, but I should probably be patient and wait. In the meantime, Let's run through, clean all this up, and get all this stuff cleaned up as well. I hope this isn't accurate. These are my head studs. Monday? What? They ship today, overnight, paid for Saturday delivery. Let's hope they come Saturday. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is, I got to the shop maybe three minutes ago, and three minutes later, FedEx comes with the package. Ta-da, my ARP head studs for the Evo 10 motor. Bad news is now I don't have time to clean all the other parts, but I don't really care. Let's get this motor finished up. All 
All right, a couple things. Make sure your dowels are in. There's one here, one here. There is this little filter, little screen thing. Kind of a pain to get out, but that goes there. Before the head gasket goes on, on this ear and this ear on both sides of the head gasket, you need just a little dab of RTV sealant. So we're gonna do that. Of course, clean the surface, running a OEM Mitsubishi head gasket, and then the head goes on. Cams are out of the head because we need access, of course, to get the studs and the nuts on. I think every time I build the motor, at least one person's confused. The head studs go hand tight into the block. There's no, no torque spec applied. One hundred and five inch pounds on the cam caps, twenty two foot pounds on the main. All right, the last complicated thing before all the external covers is the timing. So we have both cam gears, new OEM chain and tensioner, all the guides. It's all very, very simple on a four b eleven. It's actually super simple. So ten minutes later, We'll be ready for the valve cover, timing cover, and oil pan, and we will have a long block. All right, this thing is fully timed up. Let's just rotate her around for a while. Make sure everything feels nice. I'd rather piston leave it. I'd rather catch a problem now versus when it's trying to fire up for the first time. All right, good to go, man. Timing cover, oil pan, valve cover, she's done. Motor is 100% complete. Now before it goes back in the car, we're gonna dress it up with everything down here. AC compressor, water pump, alternator, power steering pump, intake manifold, turbo kit, everything right here, wiring harness. Let's get all of this on. Of course, we do need the various sensors, Myvec, oil control solenoids, cam sensors, crank sensor, things like that. But man, we're moving right along. We need to install a brand new turbo that hasn't come in yet. Other than that, this thing is ready, all dressed up, ready to go back into the Evo 10. Man, oh man, that was a long day and a half of building a motor. Saturday afternoon right now, I'm trying to have this thing running by this evening, but I'm gonna wrap up this video right here. Crazy to think that this car was running Thursday afternoon, and now it's about to be running again with a fully built motor, which is exciting.